Hello everybody. I wanted to make this video uh, to go over some of the Jellyfish uh, control box components and how you might be able to take it over uh, for control with third-party devices. Let's begin. So with the box closed, you see you've got your screen. Uh, you can control this locally. So if I want to turn it on, I can. And then I can see that it's a kind of a purple chase. This is what we use for our backyard a lot. I can change the brightness. I can change the um, these are all custom presets that I've done. Um, and so anything you have saved in there, you can do as well. You can go to menu, you know, Christmas trees, you can do anything else you want on here. Um, all locally. So if the cloud ever dies, you still got control. Let's take a look inside the box. So when we take the faceplate off, we see the screen in the middle. We've got our 48 volt power supply. This is what powers the lights themselves. Um, this is only on when you turn the lights on. It's, we have the five volt in 12 volt power supply. If you look, we've got dual voltages coming off of this. If I can focus, we've got dual voltages coming off in this. Voltage one is five volt, voltage two is 12 volt. We'll go over to that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Over here, we have our power switch, power coming in. When you turn this to the main switch for the box, when you turn it off, everything is off, including the five volt or the, including the, lo the lower voltage, the five and 12 for the controllers. Um, then we have the main power supply. We already discussed that. That only comes on when the relay over here is triggered. It's triggered by the app uh, and the other controller so that this only is on and screaming at you when the lights are on. Um, it's very loud, as you heard at the beginning. Uh, up here we have our ethernet in um the wireless is also up there uh, comes up from up here goes down to the box up here we have our main io board uh, this is where the lights actually output or the board actually outputs to the lights the pixels themselves are ws2811 allowing us to communicate with them with any standard pixel controller as long as it can push the range of data we need to uh, this is in my installation. The farthest run is probably 75 feet before the first pixel. Um, and it does this quite well. Uh, that run I'm actually not taking over with third-party controller. Um, it's just the shorter ones to the front of my house. So your mileage may vary. Um, let's take a look at the wiring. Very carefully pull this out. And this is why I like having this box closed most of the time and I don't have to open it up to rewire it. So, off of our control board, we've got our ground or common, our yellow is our data, and then our brown is the plus 48 volts to the lights. Now, electrons don't care what color they are, so your colors in your box might vary. What matters is the positions on these headers, which depending on your installation may not be the same as mine. Um, please refer, you know, talk to Jellyfish and refer to any user manuals you can find to help you out with that. Um, because I did not want to change the wiring on the headers, I did all of my wiring over here next to the connectors out to the field wiring. So let's take a look at that. This goes to my back porch, which I only want to control from Jellyfish. This is unmodified. This is how it comes, uh, was installed. We've got our red, which is our voltage plus, combined with our, uh, which goes over to our brown. Our yellow comes to the white line, which is our data. And then we've got a combined, notice there's two wires here, uh, a combined black and green that go to our green common and ground. Um, so that is what's going out to the lights. I have three physical runs of LEDs, one, two, and three. And in a normal operation, this goes the lights all from here, fine and dandy, it works. But I want to sync with music. I want to have this part of my light shows. I don't want to have to double hang lights on my roof line. I went into this installation wanting that from the beginning. Thankfully, Jellyfish was able to talk to me and uh, I was able to figure out a way to do it before I invested in the system. So I've got another device in here that's taking power uh, from the 12 volt side of this five volt, 12 volt power supply. Um, I thought it was very important that I use um, the, the, the power supply that's there. It had extra capacity for me to power this. All of my commons and grounds are together. I don't have to worry about anything shorting out. Um, because it's all in the same box, it's all jumped together. So from this, I've got my 
uh, my Wagos, which are splitting the wire, the 12 volt side that goes up to the controller, and then also joining in my streaming ACN device. So this is the uh, DMX King uh, DM LE DMX Pro 4. Uh, this has since been superseded by a new device, but operation is very similar. I have my data in, which is my uh, uh, ethernet connection. Um, this is for a remote that we're not using. This, if you want DMX out of it, you can get DMX out of it. Um, and I've actually made a patch cable that I can go from that to uh, my patch bay if I want to send DMX over any of my in-house wiring. So I've got my voltage in, I've got my commons jumped, and then I've got my data out. Um, this device takes in, uh, will take an ARTnet, it will take in uh, streaming ACN, otherwise known as E1.31, and then it outputs your uh, pixel, uh, uh, your SPI of choice, in this case it's WS2811, like I said, um, to, once you configure it, to your lights. Pretty straightforward. Um, this just lives on my network. And then any controller, any software, anything that will output streaming ACN or ARTnet um, can send to this device and talk to my pixels, uh, my Jellyfish pixels. Now, uh, you do still have to go into the app and tell it to be on, but when you're in third-party control, it doesn't matter what preset you tell it to be as long as power is going to the lights. Data doesn't matter because you're taking your data from here. So when I schedule my shows, I come in and I schedule a preset on my uh, on the Jellyfish controller to turn on at the same time in my show, usually about five minutes before, um, and then it'll receive its data from over here when it's time. Um, that part's... So that's all about the third-party control that I'm using. Um, I've tested this. It works with uh, X-Lights outputs. I've got it for my light shows coming off of Raspberry Pi, Pi loaded with Falcon controller. Um, I've also tested it with LEFX if you want to do real-time audio. The issue there is finding a device next to your phone or whatever sending that can send audio. Um, and then the good thing is you just plug it into your network and whatever device is sending from LE, uh, LEDFX can come up here over your network. Um, so I've got all this going to, to <laughs> uh, it's a little junky in here, um, over to my network switch and my patch panel for the house. Um, uh, for those of you that are curious, I am running a separate uh, VLAN just for my lighting so that show traffic stays off of my Wi-Fi. Alright, back to the jellyfish wiring. So from the, on the ones I've taken over, from the I.O. board, I've got a Wago to a wire. And then I've got a return wire that goes to my lights. That comes from this little switch over here. Very simply, I've got wired in from my DMX uh, or from my uh, DMX King device, and then from my Jellyfish, and then output on the center uh, center pole. So all I have to do with the box closed, I can select between Jellyfish and third party, and it makes it very simple. So I can change over without uh, having to rewire the box every time. So that is how I've done it. I hope that answers any of your questions. Recap, there's your 48 volt power supply. This is your five volt and 12 volt power supply, which is powering both my third party device and the Jellyfish controller. In the Jellyfish controller, we have our IO board and that's intercepted with a toggle switch that can choose the data line between the Jellyfish and the third party controller. Um, I went with the third party controller because, or with the uh, professional um, purpose built device because I didn't want to spend time troubleshooting Arduino uh, or Raspberry Pi or anything else uh, with custom stuff on it. I just wanted a device that just worked so I could put it in here, not think about it, and it just worked. And I've been very, very happy with it. It handles the length of the run just fine. Uh, you've seen my shows posted, it works great. That's uh, pretty much all that there is to it. I uh, hope everybody finds this useful. Cheers.